So what we're going to do next is, people okay with VMs? Uh, so I was going to go over the VM real quick. Okay, so what we're going to do next is kind of just take a look at the VM that you guys all installed last night. Uh, we're obviously going to be using it. This is just the bare bones. Here's how you turn it on. Here's how you shut it down. So on and so forth. Uh, for anyone that may have those kind of questions. So, if you have the VM on your machine, let's go ahead and start by, so you'll need to start by, if you're running just your regular operating system, so you're running, you're running maybe you're running Linux, you're, running, you're probably running Windows, you're probably running OSX, you would have installed VirtualBox as part of installing the VM. VirtualBox is what we call a hypervisor. It's the program that runs virtual machines. So its job is basically to simulate your computer at the software level so that you can run other operating systems on your computer to those operating systems, so to the virtual machines. They think they're running on real hardware, but you don't have to actually disrupt any of the hardware or change any of the software on your system. Um, so this is VirtualBox. Regardless of whether you're on Linux, Windows, or a Mac, it should look pretty much like this. You guys won't have all of these here, you'll just have one of them uh, if you just install it once. So to go ahead and start the VM, you always have to start by starting up VirtualBox. Then you'll just want to go ahead and highlight the VM that you imported earlier, and you'll go ahead and hit the Start button, which should start the VM booting. This is kind of an old computer, so it may take a moment or two. And like I said, if anyone's having trouble with any of this, just getting it working, we'll be sticking around afterwards a little bit too to go over problems people may be having. So I guess any more jokes for next time? Just to get more with when the uh, video starts. So everything that you have down in a virtual machine going to be erased if you shut that down? No. No. Uh, not if you install it on your desktop. These virtual machines, so you can set it up like that, but by default this is a persistent virtual machine. So every change you make is going to persist throughout reboots. Okay. So it'll behave like a regular computer for most intents and purposes. All right. Cool. So, well, okay, there we go. So once the VM boots up, mine goes straight to full screen mode, but yours may not. So you can, in fact, shrink it to a smaller window and run it alongside other programs. I find this to be terribly annoying because I get confused as to what's going on in my actual computer versus what's going on in the virtual machine. So I'm just going to go ahead and maximize this screen. You may have started out like that. And once you maximize this screen, you should be looking at, essentially, this is what it would look like if you, this is the first time you've booted your virtual machine. Uh, you'll be looking at a Ubuntu desktop. Uh, there's Dropbox installed on the virtual machine. The one downside to virtual machines is it can be a little tricky on to how you get your files on and off the virtual machine. The easiest way to do it is probably just to, if you have a Dropbox account, log into it on the virtual machine, save all your work on the virtual machine in a Dropbox folder, and then if you want to access on your regular machine, it'll be in your Dropbox folder there as well. Um, the hard disk for this virtual machine or the hard drive where all your files are stored is really just a big file on your computer, but there's no way to really go into that file and get the subfiles that exist inside there. So using Dropbox is probably the easiest way to transfer files between on the virtual machine and the wider world. The virtual machine also has internet access, so you can do silly things like email it to yourself on the virtual machine. If you have a file you need to take back and forth either from your computer onto the virtual machine or back. Um, Dropbox is easier. If you're not interested in using Dropbox, you can completely ignore it. That's fine. It's going to be annoying and pop up and prompt you every time you move the virtual machine unless you want to install it, which we can go over later. But if you want to use Dropbox, you would just go ahead, go through here, set up your Dropbox account, put in your appropriate info, and then all of your Dropbox files will sync onto the virtual machine. Other than Dropbox, if we just kind of look at this screen here, I'm not going to bother setting it up right now. So over on the left side of this screen, we have what in Ubuntu is called the launcher. So the things that are going to be different between different Linux flavors, whether you're using Ubuntu or whether you're using Arch or whether you're using Debian, uh, does tend to kind of be the desktop environment, so like what this looks like. When we get down onto the command line level, it all tends to be about the same. But at this level, what you have over here is, this is very similar to the way it would work on an OS X or a Mac. You have a series of programs over here. There's an icon for each program. If you click on it, 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 it launches. So I can fire up Google Chrome. 
in theory, if your computer itself is connected to the internet, then the virtual machine should also magically connect to the internet. The magic doesn't always work so great, so let us know if you're having trouble. But uh, I can fire up Chrome, it should take me to Google. Uh, I can actually add and remove. Okay, so I can add and remove icons from this bar. I mean, I can click and drag them around. This is just kind of, and these don't all have to be here. As a matter of fact, all, not, not all the programs on my machine are even shown here on the launcher. So if I want to access something that isn't shown here, that's what this up at the top does. So if I click this, I get what's called the dash. And this is essentially just a catch-all search box that lets you both search for other programs as well as files on this machine. So if I can pick out something that I don't already have on the side, or even if it's something that I do, um, well, here, let's look for games. OK, so we want to see. There's no games on the side right now, but there are some games installed here. If I just run a search, it'll show me the other things. I could click here to start this program if I wanted to put it, if I wanted to shortcut it over here. So I can just drag it over and drop it there. So this is all completely customizable. If you don't see it here, these are just shortcuts. If you delete something from here, if you don't see it here, it doesn't mean you've deleted it from your computer. It doesn't mean the program's not there anymore. This is just quick ways to get to programs. Most of what we're going to be talking about is actually going to take place via the command line, so we won't be touching quite as much on this GUI, so graphical user interface side of things. But there are ways to essentially, if you come up here, you can search for files, you can search for other programs. You can also browse for files. So clicking here will take you to your home folder. Uh, so both Windows and OS X also have a notion of your home folder. This is like your My Documents or what have you. It's just the default file location on the hard disk where it saves your stuff. There's nothing special about it. You don't have to save your stuff here. It's just this is by convention where you tend to put it. Um, so if I look if I look at this in my home folder, I have uh, a folder of what's on my desktop. I have a folder of documents, a folder of downloads. Very similar to the way Windows or Mac would work, essentially just subfolders that store various things you might want to have. Uh, we'll be going through the file system in more detail here in a little bit. But if you want to browse it via the GUI, like you would in Windows or Mac, you can do it by clicking on this folder. The VM has both Google Chrome and Firefox on it. Those are probably going to be your two browsers of choice as long as you're on here. There's no Internet Explorer in Linux. I probably don't have to apologize for that, <laughs> um, but don't go looking for it. It doesn't exist. Uh, I noticed there was a camera set up. Are these going to be uploaded online to YouTube? Yes, okay. that's the plan. Okay. Um, we'll talk about that more afterwards, but uh, yeah. Anything else? And feel free to jump in and interrupt. I'm happy to take questions throughout. You have to save them to the end. OK, so other things you might want to deal with here, and there's not a lot. Uh, well, we're going to go through a lot of more detail, kind of the programs that are available uh, on the command line when we do that here in a sec. If I want to close a program when it's open, if I scroll up here to the top, you'll see this top bar changes when I put my mouse on it. That's how I get access to your standard file, edit, etc. menus. It's also how I get access to this nice X that I can click to close the window. Uh, if I'm done using the VM, it's best to kind of shut it down gracefully like you would a normal computer. There, there are multiple ways of doing this. I mean, so technically I can go back to VirtualBox, which is still running on my regular computer. And I can just tell this I want to stop this VM. I can right click on it. And I can tell it to pause. I can tell it to stop. That's a little bit akin to, or at least telling it to stop, it's a little bit akin to just like unplugging the power on your computer or popping the battery out of your laptop. Well, it'll probably be fine. It's really not the best way to go about doing it. When you're actually done using the VM, if you look up here in the right hand corner, you kind of have some of your standard stuff. You have a clock, you have a volume manager. Um, you have this little icon here tells you what's going on with the networking. You have something here that'll tell you what's going on with the battery. It will be pretty meaningless. So. Uh, it's probably not going to mean much because you already have a battery manager on your actual laptop, so the one inside the VM doesn't mean anything. But if you look at this little gear over here in the far right, if you click on that, you'll see you have a number of options. This is how you would access the settings, which we we'll probably won't need to get into. Um, but more importantly, this is how you can go ahead and shut down the machine normally. So if you click up here in the right corner, you go to shut down, it'll give you your standard, are you sure you want a prompt, shut down prompt, and you can click shut down to shut the VM down. I'm not going to do that right now because I'll have to wait for it to boot up again, but it'll go through its standard steps, it'll shut down, and eventually the window will just disappear altogether when it's done shutting down. 
and you'll just be back looking at your native desktop with the virtual box window still open, showing all the VMs you have and letting you start it up again. So kind of any basic questions on what's where looking at the Ubuntu desktop? Okay, so I think now we're doing the mat so you can go over kind of some of where the documentation is in Linux. Right before I do that, the thing that is most important on this taskbar, the program you're going to be using most frequently, is what's called the terminal. Uh, so this is essentially just your access to the command line interface on this machine. So if you want to go ahead and open up a terminal, I just maximize it so it's easier for me to tell what's going on, and I have more window space. Once you open a terminal, you will get a little prompt here. It'll give you your username and your computer name. If you're using the VM, everyone's username is user. The password's also user. Uh, that's documented online, but in case you need it, but you get a little prompt, and this is essentially where we can start issuing commands to the computer to do things outside of clicking on them or a GUI type environment. People okay? All right. 